what are the materials essential for the process of photosynthesis so it took nearly 300 years to find out the various materials that are necessary for photosynthesis so it was not known to the uh, ancient people earlier people how the process goes on if we look at the equation given by van neel so what was the equation carbon dioxide plus two water molecules gives rise to uh, molecule uh, glucose plus water plus oxygen so this was the equation a simple equation formulated by cb van neel so by looking at this equation we can understand the required materials like carbon dioxide and water these are the two chief materials so now let us see the importance of carbon dioxide the importance of water for the process of photosynthesis so water and photosynthesis if we look at this water and photosynthesis if we recall van helmont's experiment proved that the water is ne necessary essential for the plant growth so he proved that water helps in increasing the mass of the plant that is for the growth of the plant earlier it was thought that the soil it was responsible for the growth of the plant but by van helmont's experiment it was proved that water is essential for the growth for increasing the mass of the plant so that was the importance now the next thing is carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is very much important for the process of photosynthesis that we will see in the coming sessions we'll see different activities to show the importance of carbon dioxide and to prove that the photosynthesis takes place only in presence of carbon dioxide okay so uh, we we have seen that the water and its role in photosynthesis now let us see the next one air air and its importance in photosynthesis so what is the relation between air and photosynthesis air is essential which part of the air is essential okay we have seen the relation between water and photosynthesis that is for the growth of the plant or food production now let us see the relation between air and photosynthesis so what is the relation between the air and photosynthesis that is the plants uh, preparing their food materials so here there were different experiments were conducted by different people about the composition of the air and different substances present in the air like one of those scientists was joseph priestley joseph priestley so this joseph priestley he conducted different experiments and he discovered the gas which is present in the air which is essential for the life on this planet that is oxygen oxygen he conducted a series of experiments in 1770 and finally in 1774 he found the oxygen but he did not give the name oxygen lavoisier he coined the name oxygen but the experiments were conducted by joseph priestley about the presence of oxygen in the air so what were the different experiments conducted to show that the air contains some substance which is important for the life of um, animals he conducted a series of experiments let us see so priestley he conducted a series of experiments like here he has taken a bell jar a big glass jar which is having a bottom when it is kept on a surface it does not allow any air to enter inside so he has created a chamber with some air captured in it so there is no exchange of air between this chamber and outside it is a transparent bell jar that means by through we, we, we can see through it so inside the bell jar he has taken a candle so a lighted candle he observed that after some time the candle stops burning the candle light becomes smaller and smaller finally the candle stops burning he also taken a mouse inside this bell jar after some time the candle the fire of the uh, the flame of the candle puts off at the same time 
the mouse it gets suffocated and die so he understood that these are deprived of some substance he understood that the air is damaged by candle and mouse so these two they damaged the air inside it that means these two they used up some part of the hair so he don't know what is that part he did not name it as oxygen but he found some important part of the air it was used by these two mouse and the candle some important part important part of air it was used used up so taken up by this candle and this mouse so he conducted another experiments in connected to the first one the same way he has taken a bell jar so in this he has taken a lighted candle and he took one more mouse a small mouse here but along with these two he introduced a mint plant a mint plant into this chamber into this bell, bell jar so here he noticed that the mouse is alive the candle is lighting and here he observed that whatever the components are taken up by this candle and the mouse they were given up by this mint plant so the mint is restoring the part which is lost in the air by these two things so that was his observation so he observed that the mint plant is contributing some part to the air which is very essential for the other animals on this planet so later it was found it was coined that uh, the name oxygen was given by lavoisier to that the part the essential part of the air so the important point that we observe in joseph priestley's experiment that is exchange of gases so where is the exchange of gases took place the exchange of gases took place between the mint plant and the mouse and candle so it shows that some part of the air that is the oxygen is essential for burning burning of the candle the part of the air that is the oxygen is essential for the mouse to live so that part that oxygen is restored in that air by the mint plant so mint plant is giving something so that is there is an exchange of gases takes place we see that animals they in their what is exchange of gases takes place by respiration by breathing even the plants also have certain organelles for the process of exchange of gases so the leaves they have certain parts called as stomata so if we observe the surface of the leaf under a microscope we find small holes or pores on their surface lower surface or upper surface we find them as small pores called as stomata so stomata are the organelles through which the exchange of gases takes place in plants so they exchange the gases for different purposes that is for their respiration to get their energy needs at the same time for the process of photosynthesis so they need the gas called carbon dioxide for the process of photosynthesis so this carbon dioxide is taken in through the stomata present on the leaf sometimes stomata are found on the roots and stem and on certain loose tissues of the plants at different parts this stomata are present so but their number is differ in different parts depending upon the activity they carry out say for example the stomata are more in number in leaves compared to other parts why they are more in number on leaves because leaves carry out not only the simple process of respiration they carry out the process of photosynthesis so they need huge amount of stomata to absorb more amount of carbon dioxide so that is necessary for the process of photosynthesis